tell you about Carlos. One morning, at the age of 27, Carlos woke up feeling drunk and dizzy. He went to see a neurologist, who performed an MRI on his brain, but without any findings. Two weeks after that, while exercising, Carlos suddenly felt like ants crawling up his back. This time, he went to see a naturopath, who gave him nutritional supplements, and Carlos' health improved a little bit, and the symptoms mostly disappeared. Three years later, however, he started to feel a numbness in both his legs. Carlos was treated with a new round of supplementation, but this time he only saw a little improvement in his condition. In 2010, Carlos' symptoms got worse. He suddenly had balance issues, and no supplementation could alleviate his symptoms. Carlos was forced to do another round of neurological tests, which finally revealed that Carlos had developed multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease in which the body's own immune cells start to attack the myelin sheet, the insulating cover that protects the neurons. And if we look at the statistics, we see that multiple sclerosis is on a rise. Currently, researchers do not completely understand which factors play into the development of such a disease. It is known that genetic components are a major factor. However, other factors could play a role equally big, if not even bigger, in this disease. Carlos' health got worse and worse, and he could barely walk anymore. In 2014, Carlos visited Dr. Perlmutter, a neurologist and author of the book Brain Maker, where he describes the connection between neurological diseases and nutrition. After some initial examinations, Dr. Perlmutter gave Carlos a nutritional plan, high in fiber and good fats, and also probiotics to reintroduce healthy microbes. Only two weeks later, Carlos' health had already improved and he started walking again. To further improve Carlos' health, Dr. Perlmutter suggested a new form of treatment, a microbiome reset, called a fecal microbiota transplantation. This treatment basically transfers the microbiome from a healthy person to a person with a disrupted microbiome. After the microbiome transplantations, Carlos' condition improved drastically. He could walk without assistance again. In the first part of this video series, I already explained the influence of the microbiome on behavior, happiness and stress. Something, however, we would not associate with our intestines is memory. But even here seems to be some kind of connection. To test if a disruption of a healthy microbiome has an impact on memory functions, scientists infected mice with a pathogen that infects the gastrointestinal tract. Half of the infected mice were given a probiotic supplement containing two different strains of lactobacilli to restore the group's microbiome. The other half did not receive any supplementation. To test each group's cognitive function, the mice were placed into a maze to test their spatial memory. The group of mice which were infected and did not receive the probiotics exhibit memory dysfunctions. However, the group that did receive the probiotics did not show any memory impairment. Therefore, the scientists concluded that the memory dysfunction was prevented by daily treatment of infected mice with probiotics. Memory is something that gets lost in the progression of Alzheimer's disease. The protein brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or short BDNF, is responsible for the survival of neurons and stimulates the growth and the differentiation of new neurons. Levels of BDNF decrease with aging and people with Alzheimer's disease have generally lower levels of BDNF. So in order to combat neuron deterioration, it could be a good idea to keep your BDNF levels up. To test if the microbiome influences BDNF levels, scientists treated mice with antibiotics and checked for their BDNF levels in different parts of the brain. The scientists found that the BDNF levels in antibiotic-treated mice were lower in the hippocampus region of the brain. The hippocampus is the region that plays a role in consolidating information from short-term to long-term memory. 
suggesting that a healthy microbiome might be important to protect our memory. Mental health diseases have become an increasingly large issue in developed countries. Just in the US, ADHD rates have increased over 50% just in the last 15 years. The death rates have doubled during the same time period for Alzheimer's disease. Depression rates are also rising, as suicide rates have increased by 24%. And cases of autism in children have more than doubled during the last few years. Finding treatment or prevention for the neurological diseases is more important than ever before. But now we have evidence that most of these diseases have their origin in the gut. If we search for scientific articles on PubMed for any of these diseases, we see that there is a strong connection to the microbiome. It is simply amazing to me how the microbiome can have such an impact not just on our physiological health, but also on our mental health, and how we can improve both with smart changes in our diet. Even though this field is still in its infancy, I am excited about its current and future findings. For me personally, a healthy diet certainly elevates my mood and helps me to focus. I also sleep better and I am less tired during the day. If you want to see more studies about the microbiome and scientifically proven ways to improve your health, consider subscribing here. And as always, thank you for watching.